it's a recreation it. of the Emperor showing Magnus the warp. Yeah. Relax. As is the Emperor dropping him off on Prospero. Exactly the the myth. Let's go. If you've never seen, when it comes to male power fantasies, the two biggest and most prominent ones that I see nowadays are either Warhammer 40k or the Roman Empire. I know I've been toying around in the channel polls for a little bit and a few other places about the idea of the Emperor of Mankind being based off from a single Emperor of the Roman Empire, and I had this really great elaborate plan to run through all of the various great emperors and which of them I believe best represents Big E or Naoth three weeks and the entirety of Dovahadi's unbiased Roman history, and I'll be honest, I am no closer. The Emperor has so many redeeming qualities that could be compared to about a dozen Roman Emperors. A lot of them have varying degrees of, uh, I guess connection you could say, whereas to like Augustus is very very similar, or Justinian or something like that. But then you have Diocletian, or Dio- not Diogenes, whatever. Th there are some that fit, some that don't. Conveniently with Rome, the first emperor is very very similar to Naoth, or the god emperor of mankind, so I really do think that's a good place to start. Conveniently, Augustus was the first Roman Emperor, and we only have one God Emperor, so he does have that going for him. Not only does Augustus have the honor of being the first Roman Emperor, he at the time had brought Rome to its biggest conquest. It had more land holdings after Augustus than any before him, and almost all after him. It also really makes sense because the Great Crusade and the Crusade of Augustus really really cement how this new empire was being formed. We have to do as much as possible right out the gate because we cannot guarantee our kids or our successors can take care of this like we can. I do think this is also a really good time to say that Augustus didn't have time to mess things up. Julius Caesar had given him such solid foundations to build an empire that as long as he did okay, he would have been fine. Now, this isn't to detract from how good Augustus really was. Augustus was phenomenal. There's a reason people say Finiquito Augusto, uh, Melior Traiana. Uh, may he be as lucky as Augustus and as good as Trajan, or I've got that backwards, but he was a big deal. So my original plan was to have the Emperor of Mankind be Augustus, and that each of the Primarchs would be a different Roman Emperor down the line. I've already made a video on this briefly, but I figure now's a good time to double down on this. While it would fit that Augustus is the Emperor of Mankind, and all of the other Primarchs would be other Emperors, I can think of between three and six Primarchs who fit the persona of a Roman Emperor near perfectly. As in my Five Good Emperors video, we know Gilliman and Dorne are Trajan and Hadrian, and considering Gilliman's love for ancient Greece, I'm going to give him the title of Hadrian. Yes, this means that in my headcanon, the Avenging Bean Counter is the Primarch of Logistics, Planning, and Conquering Little Greek Femboys. Also, it makes a lot of sense that Hadrian and Gilliman, and vice versa, are those emperors, because both are extremely level-headed rulers. It takes a lot to bring out the sheer animal that both of these guys contain, but when that gets unleashed, oh boy. Imagine being that poor word bearer who just flushed Gilliman out of the airlock, and you just watch Steve's head explode. Moving on, we have the lion being Marcus Aurelius with his stoicism and certainty. Conrad Kurz would be either Caligula or Nero for obvious reasons. I lean towards Caligula since he claimed to have some degree of clairvoyance or true sight. Big talk for a guy who went to war with water after all. Also, in an ironic twist, I pinned Lorgar and Constantine the Great together. I know it sounds stupid, but Lorgar laid the foundation for the later Imperium, and it, like, completely in a religious sense. The Lectitio Divinitatis is the basis for the Imperial Creed of the modern setting of 40k. Constantine brought the previously pagan Roman Empire into the Christian Holy Roman Empire. Moving back to the Big Golden Lighthouse, the next emperor that I wanted to pin as the God Emperor is Justinian. In a weird sense, the plague of psychers that caused the Age of Strife, or allegedly caused the Age of Strife, is in a way comparable to the plague of Justinian, which was one of the very first outbreaks of the bubonic plague which comes from the bacterium Yersinia pestis. The literal plague being the psyker plague is also a really really strong case for both emperors being the same. Justinian caught the plague when it struck Rome during his reign, and he survived, much like the Emperor being a psyker trying to stop or kill other psychers. We also get a much more literal and epidemiological connection between the plague and the human psyker plague. Slowly throughout history, we had minor outbreaks of the plague throughout East Asia, and that would occasionally work their way westwards, much like how psychers have always existed in some capacity, but they seem to have waves to them. 
or in another word they have different outbreaks or there's weird levels of awakening. We know during the Age of Strife that psychers started to show up more frequently, but we also know that psychers had existed for thousands of years before that since the shamans sacrificing their souls formed Big E, and every couple of millennia or tens of millennia the frequency of psychers would just ramp up, kind of like a new disease vector. Each one of these different levels of psychic awakening can be almost directly shown to be an analog for a plague outbreak. Say the plague outbreak that destroyed the Age of Strife was the Justinian Plague, then the psychic awakening that we are seeing currently in the setting would be the Black Death. Now, the last thing I want to connect Justinian and Big E with directly is probably the least consequential of all of the connections, and it's the name Belisarius. They both interacted with a guy named Belisarius. Moving on. I now want to discuss the poll option that got the least amount of votes, and personally I think that's for good reason, Domitian. Big E and Domitian have so little in common. Yeah, they are good rulers, but the Emperor didn't do anything for the economy of the Imperium that I know of. If you want to tell me about how the Emperor founded the first national mint of the Imperium in year X on planet Y, feel free, I'm okay with being wrong. I know that he implemented the Imperial Tithe, and he let Malkador set up the Administratum and let them figure the tithes out, but he didn't directly influence the economy and address inflation, quite like Domitian did. Now the last Emperor that I want to discuss is my personal favorite, and that's Diocletian. Diocletian was a pretty awesome Emperor, he didn't really stand out as, you know, one of the top five, but he was still really awesome. And he gave up being the Emperor to grow cabbages, and that is almost exactly what Big E did. He won his 1v1 with Horus, and he retired to the field to grow warp cabbages. That is my headcanon. And now we get to the point in the video where I pull the rug out from under you. Who I think the Emperor of Mankind is, isn't a Roman Emperor. He's just some dictator in Lower Europe. It's Julius Caesar, or Kaiser. I will be pronouncing it as Kaiser. It is such a thinly veiled truth that I really don't know why I didn't put two and two together sooner. Both men were cut short at what could be considered almost, or even at the peak of their careers. The Emperor was almost done unifying the galaxy, and Caesar was almost done unifying his holdings after the collapse of the First Triumvirate. Roman Senate in the time of Kaiser is also a really, really good analogy for the Primarchs of the Imperium. Both are extremely divided and had multiple factions on each side working near independently. Although the numbers don't line up exactly between the conspirators and the traitor primarchs, it's still worth mentioning how similar they are due to the circumstances. It's also worth mentioning that the Emperor of Mankind doesn't really consider his primarchs his friends. On a good day, it was more like a father-son, but usually it was a boss-to-employee relationship. Similar to how some of the senators who conspired were some of the Caesarians, or chosen few. Namely Brutus, Cassius, and Decimus for Julius, and Horus, Lorgar, and Magnus for the big golden light bulb. It's also worth mentioning that Erda, despite being a true nothing burger of a character, is an analog for Cleopatra. Specifically, the one Kaiser was laying pipe and smoking opium on the Nile with. There are so many damn Cleopatras and Ptolemies, if you ever want to see a family wreath, look at the Ptolemaic dynasty of Egypt. Not many times in history do the Habsburgs blush, but the Ptolemaic dynasty is up there. Back to something relevant to the video. We get to discuss how Erda and Cleopatra both took off with the kids, or in the case of the Kaiser, kid, and were perfect scapegoats. Kaiser got to wash his hands of Egypt, and the Emperor got to pretend like he didn't plan for all, or almost all, of the Primarchs to end up where they did. Kaiser planned for Caesarion to grow up and to essentially be the governor of Egypt, or that section of the Nile, however he was going to divvy it up. Both Erda and Cleopatra ran off with the kids. I think it's a good time to bring up the Triumvirate of Kaiser and the Emperor at this point, because they are both really, really good analogs for each other. Not so much the second triumvirate, but the first triumvirate fits very well. Julius Kaiser's triumvirate was Crassus, Marcus Crassus specifically, Pompey, I don't remember his name, I don't care too much, fuck that guy, and Julius Kaiser himself. Big E had himself Naoth, Malkador the Sigilite, and Constantine Valdor. Crassus was supposed to be the analog for Malkador, or vice versa, Malkador was definitely supposed to be his analog, but I like to think that the Roman Emperor existed second 
and they just wanted to give 40k something to base their you know world off from. The Malkador Crassus part of the Triumvirate was supposed to essentially ensure that the finances, the bureaucratic aspect of the empires ran smoothly. They were the wheels of bureaucracy, you could say. Next up, we have Valdor and Pompey, both being incredible generals, incredible warriors in their own right, and both extremely respected and venerated within their field. I want to end this off with the divinity aspect. If you're not familiar with niche-niche aspects of Roman history, I can assume that you don't know this, but Julius Caesar was said to be a direct descendant. Venus or Aphrodite? Bloodline was that of a god, of divinity much like the Emperor and him being a god. The most ironic aspect, though, is that both men spent almost their entire waking lives convincing people that they were not a god, only to have their divinity etched on their tomb. 